a different direction. So this will either be a total success or you'll be like, oh my goodness. Um, as I said, um, I'm the CFO of Exo Group, and I may really challenge the button here because I have a lot of slides to show you all. You guys go for it. There we go. Uh, I thought I'd cover three things this morning. First, I want to tell you a story of our company. Uh, we're a really interesting story in that we're a company that's been around quite a while, and we're really trying to do that classic cross the chasm to the next stage of our company's transition. I wanted to tell you a little bit about how APIs fit into the work we're doing at our company. And then finally, I can't resist because our company is at the center of some really exciting stuff, which is mission critical, weddings, babies, and your home. <clears throat> I can't resist giving you guys some tips to take home with you. Okay, so we are, Exo Group owns uh, three brands. Uh, you may have heard of us. How many folks are engaged in the room? Anyone? A customer. I like it. Anyone married? Been through that wedding process? You know about it? Anyone hoping to get married? <laughs> At any rate, someone who invited me to speak here is getting married. And I had to put this up because weddings, babies, kids are these key moments in folks' lives. And Oren made the mistake of inviting me to speak here. I'm the CFO of a company that does weddings, babies, kids. And he got engaged between the time he invited me and the time I showed up. So congratulations to Oren. He actually already has a copy of The Knot magazine. And I'm helping him slowly but surely work his way towards the wet, big wedding. <clears throat> so EXO Group. Um, we are here in New York. Uh, we're a company of about 714 employees, of which uh, we have a chunk over in China. We are the number one wedding property um, out there. Um, and we are bigger by far than all of our competitors. Uh, we have one of the fastest growing baby properties in the bump. Um, and uh, we're actually an 18 year old company. And after 18 years in the business and a ton of success, our co-founder and uh, former CEO David Liu decided we needed to cross the chasm, that we weren't doing enough, that there was a lot more opportunity ahead and he replaced himself as CEO, brought me in as CFO, and I'll show you a couple of our other leaders, and said, we gotta shake this up and change our business. So we are in the process, we've about, been at it about a year now, of completely reinventing our company and doing that cross the chasm where we're essentially trying to run the car down the road while we change out the engine at the same time. We are in about five businesses. Um, so you may have come across us in your past. Uh, first, we have a local online business. This is where you go in, you say, I'm getting married in Chicago, and we will give you lists of the best venues, the best florists, the best bands, DJs, et cetera, to help you uh, find those, the right people for your perfect day. We have a national um, advertising business. This is both um, wedding dress, endemic advertisers, ring makers, wedding dresses, and the like as well as folks like Volvo and big P&G, big brands like that, because it turns out that when folks are getting married, having babies, moving into new homes, there is a tremendous amount of spend and they are very open to brand impression. And so we have quite a good business advertising against that. <clears throat> we have a publishing business, and I just hit the button so I may lose my slide. Uh, which is our magazine, and we have, we have multiple magazines out there. We have local magazines to help you if you're in um, a region. Our Texas magazine is bigger by, than the phone book by like threefold. The thing is like this big, and it is an awesome, awesome resource. And we have um, a number of books that we put out as well. We have a registry business. This is your classic affiliate business. And uh, we have an e-commerce business where you can buy napkins and tchotchkes for your wedding, um, all sorts of interesting things for bridesmen, groomsmen, et cetera. <clears throat> so our business is, is really interesting. And it may say, you may say, wow, this is sort of frivolous, weddings, babies, et cetera. But this is big business. So basically, this is the, the wedding timeline. Uh, your first baby, similar timeline. It's about 12 months. And our job is to know what decisions people tend to make at what point along that timeline. And so... As um, some of the speakers before said, finding the right service at the right time is really, really important, and we're really, really good at this. And so what you'll see here across the line of decisions folks make, I sort of 
narrowed it down to the big guys here, we have different products to show folks as they go forward. And for anyone who's been through this process, and it depends, sometimes it's the groom, sometimes it's the bride, but the level of obsession is somewhat unique in our business. Real obsession. And so we really, our job is to provide obsessed people with the stuff they want at the time they want. Really interesting fun fact about this business, the wedding business, and this may shock some of you, you may already know this, your pockets may be empty because of it, is a $60 billion a year business. And so in a life cycle, this is why these national advertisers love this business, that spend goes through the moon for a year, and it's a 12-month spend. And every year, same thing happens. Average wedding price uh, in America, some of you will be happy about this, some of you will be depressed because you're going to have spent more or less. It's about $30,000 year in, year out, economy, no economy. People love this stuff, and it is a big, big opportunity, and we're super excited about it. <coughs> As I said, we are a transformation company, and what I'll show you is that we think we have a huge opportunity ahead. And that's why I say we're this really interesting story of transformation and business transformation. Um, this story is just beginning. Uh, it'll be fun to see what we can do. There, we are, there's a lot ahead for us. But basically, we think we have a ton more opportunity than we have today. A couple slides ago, you probably wouldn't have noticed it, but I showed you our revenue growth. And it's been in the single digits for a number of years. And we're trying to, to grow that business significantly. And the way we're doing it is by looking at the assets we have, investing in our growth areas, sustaining our positive businesses, and reviewing our businesses that aren't doing as well for us. It's a classic business case in transformation, and it's a lot of work. As we've come into the company, the new CEO, myself, a number of our partners, um, and our whole organization, we basically are trying to do the cross the chasm move. And essentially, our company has been a 5% grower for years and years and years. And our attempt is to take our business to the double digits. We're getting there in a number of ways. I thought I'd focus on two, and I'll focus predominantly on the API side. But I'd, to do this, we've had to rebuild our company from the studs up. And we're trying to do it while we continue to operate our business at a very high level. We're a public company. We have shareholders. We need to keep them happy, get them to buy into our vision, and get all the things done we want to get done. Part of this process has been an upgrade to our management team of our nine leaders. We have five new. We have done a ton of new hiring across our company, and also bringing up a lot of our really great talent inside the company as well. So for you all and API folks, the more interesting piece of this probably is our product roadmap. When our CEO came to the company, we had exactly one iOS developer at the company. And I'm talking about obsessed people. And as Tom said, you know, everybody's going to have multiple devices. Obsessed people, obsessing about rings, dresses, flower colors, probably want to obsess on our mobile devices. Um, uh, a side note I'll tell you, we've, as, we've had, as we've revamped our product line, we found really interesting things about these obsessed people. One of our products, uh, it's over on the, over here, is essentially, it's called a lookbook. And inside this lookbook are about 60,000 wedding dresses. It may seem like not a lot, but this is great business. 60,000 wedding dresses. In the, when we first launched this product, we had one customer, we don't know who they were, go through those 60,000 dresses a total of six times in the course of 20 hours. That's the obsession. It's a great business, <laughs> right? Think about that. 60,000 dresses again and again and again. And we hear these stories all the time. I interview young women a lot for jobs at our company. I had one young woman say she just lies in bed looking at the wedding rings. She's not engaged. <laughs> she has a boyfriend. Can you imagine this poor guy every night? It's like, right. And in our magazine, most of these things are ads. So we're making money every time she obsesses. It's a really fun thing. But on the product side, and the stuff you guys would probably relate to more, we've had to reinvent our entire product line. And we really have to move from individual products to intertwined products and services. 
We've got to live the life cycle of their planning. The magic of our business is to not show someone venues a month before their wedding. They've probably made that decision nine to 12 months before. A month before the wedding, you want to sell them more attached fees because they're trying to make that thing exactly perfect. And you can sell them one more thing that makes the reception great. We need a shared look and feel across our product, and we really need strong security. And this is where I'm singing for my supper, but APIs enable a lot of this, and they're a key piece of the architecture we are employing. Okay, so this is where I get in trouble. So I'm gonna show you our old and our new, and a real disclaimer. <laughs> I am a CFO. I used to be a venture capitalist. I know this is important, and the reason I'm here is that I met Oren when Mashu was private, and I sort of became a stalker, following him around everywhere. Oh, there he is, uh, following him around everywhere. And so, this is not technically correct. This is CFO speak after a good session with our product guys, but the basic concept is there. So I'm directionally correct, and no technicians, no one technical should come and tell me what I got wrong here. But our old product strategy was essentially siloed. So we had a series of products, the company, as I said, is 18 years old, and those products had oftentimes been built individually. That's really much easier to do. You don't have to worry about coordination between things. You can protect revenue streams. But it really limited our ability to live the dream of giving obsessed people the things they need at the times they need them. And so we had to go all the way to the studs to rebuild. Our rebuild looks, and again, CFO disclaimer, a little like this. We essentially have databases of the key um, attributes of our business, whether it's content, transactional data, membership data. Just a fun fact about us, there are two, uh, roughly two million weddings a year. Um, about three qu quarters of those folks sign up to, as members of the knot at some point in their journey. So it's pretty awesome. And so we have to manage all of this across all these different products. Obsessed people wanna have products at all times of the day or night. We need to provide that. And an API cloud is actually the key way we can get ourselves there. So what you'll see for us from us, us on the horizon is a new knot. And you've already seen, those of you who don't know us, you'll, if you were to look at our company, you'll see a lot of new products. We have had to go back and create an environment where we're constantly releasing new products. So we'll probably see a lot of new products on the future. We're gonna continue to innovate, particularly in our commerce commerce area, and we are going to reap a lot of the investments we've made in the last year. Just an interesting fact about our company, our company had grown our revenue 5%, our operating expense growth had been about 5%, and on top of that, in 2014, we've layered um, an awe-inspiring $15 million of spend. As a CFO, it's a little scary, but it's really important to getting our company to where we, we are going, and what we've told our investors is that they'll start to see progress against these investments we're making in 2015. So that's the EXO story. Jury's still out. We're really, really excited. And um, we've got a lot of chapters to go on the transformation of our company. And again, to sing for my supper, APIs are really helping us here. Okay, so I can't resist because we are the best in the business, because we have two engaged people in the audience. And because some of you might want to go home with some information to share with your families that's more than just technical. So I'm going to give you some tips from the people who are the very best in the business. Some of these you know, some of these you don't. I hope you use some of them to guide friends and family in their wedding planning. Engagements. It doesn't matter who does it. It just matters it's authentic. And the key reason is you're going to be telling the story a gazillion times. And so... Do it authentically, and you'll do great. You don't need a flash mob. Themes. A lot of people, particularly in tech, will tend to say, I want to have a Star Wars version 3 wedding. With, I, I don't even, I'm, I'm going to mess this up. Han Solo and R2, I don't even know if they're Star Wars. But like, you know, I want to have them have the exact costumes. Not usually a good idea. Better idea, and probably better than the Star Wars thing, who might be English Garden, Rustic Ranch. You get so specific to Downton Abbey and you got a little bit of a problem. Colors. The best color combinations are two. This I did not know. I broke this rule in spades at my own wedding. Uh, typically you pick one primary and the others are an accent. 
the budget. And this is really an interesting one. Your budget is not at all connected to your taste level. And I'm sure some of you experienced this. I've been to weddings that I spent a gazillion dollars, and it has been interesting. And I've been to weddings that cost all of $2,000, and they've been the best weddings I've ever been to. So don't feel the pressure on budget. It's not about your taste. The guest list. Universal rules. Exceptions are where you really get yourself in trouble and spend a lot of time with your guest management. And the other thing is, our advice is to make sure the envelopes have the right thing on them. Don't leave it open for interpretation. Related, this is the big one. What do you guys think this is? I see him. He knows. Don't do it. Go into a cash bar. Budget isn't related to taste. Our advice is, if you can't afford the bar, do a signature drink. Do just beer. Do just wine. Do a little bit of both. Don't get your friends to pay for their own drinks at your wedding. You probably wouldn't do it when they came over for dinner either. <laughs> and uh, this, is a, this is a big one. Plus ones. Many of you have been married, right? Everybody calls. They want to have their girlfriend they met yesterday. We actually think you should probably just add them. Make people happy. Bride villas and groom villas. It actually can be both, one or the other. It happens. These are really stressful times. This is why we have a great business opportunity. It's so exciting because we can help people try to be just a little bit less like a lunatic as they run into the process. Okay, a couple quick thumbs down. Some of you know these, some of you don't, but let me hit them. Garter toss. No thanks. Elopement. Now, I love that this is on my editor's list because our business is about planning big weddings. So if you elope, you basically ruin our business. So I, I kind of love that. They, the editors gave me these and I said, elopement? Some people might want that one. I'm not sure. Asking for money is a gift. Folks will either give you money or they won't. Don't ask for it. And e-bike. We like the real paper stuff at EXO. So that's the EXO story. Final thing I'd leave you with on weddings. Universally, we believe everybody has the right to marry whomever they want, however they want. No judgment there. It's a really fun time. It's a really awesome business opportunity. We're very, very excited about it. And I thank you very much for having patience with this subject at our technical conference. And I welcome your questions. Thanks, Julian. And this Thanks. is the new knot. One question. Sure. And as I was listening to you, you talked about a CAGR of 5%, double digit growth, that you're looking at that's ambitious. Um, how do APIs fit in and say a partnering strategy to help drive growth? Where are you looking yeah. at driving the growth? So, you guys, I showed you guys that timeline, yeah. and then I showed you dots along all of our businesses. If I kind of extracted that further, there's a lot of partners that help us make this happen. And so when we're delivering services, our sort of dream is bride, you know, the young woman in, in bed on her iPhone app, obsessing over these rings or dresses. Let's just go to the dresses one. Uh, sees a dress she loves. We want her to be able to make a call to a bridal vendor, find out if the dress is there, set up an appointment to go see it. And there's a lot that has to get put together to make that happen. And the dream of really connecting folks to the transactions they're making as they go through this $60 billion adventure um, is really important to our ability to deliver the magic and to deliver the growth. So for us, the only way we can get there is a flexible API structure that not only lets us be flexible about all the products we're creating, but also the number of people we're connecting into our infrastructure. So it, it, it's, it's funny, but you know, it's, it really is important for us. You know, we had to go rebuild our technology. We could never grow our company in the double digits if we weren't able to flexibly connect a ton of different people. Ton of new partners coming on in the platform. That's great. Julian, thank you so much. Thanks for your very time. much.